Howdy folks, welcome to another episode of Storytime with Iron Wings. Today we will be discussing probably the last knife I have in this series. I can probably produce quite a few more episodes, but uh, we'll see how the rest of this series, this season, plays out and how this works out, and we'll work from there, okay? So, what we're discussing today is probably the first fixed blade I ever owned. If you've looked at my Veterans Day special, you kind of know the story already, but... I still kind of owe people a background on it. So just to explain the series a bit, this is not so much a factual review of any knives I own. This is more of a personal exploration and anecdotes about the knives I own and why I'd never get rid of them or sell them again. So in this case, let's get into the story. I was about 17 or 18 years old and I was looking at graduating high school. Uh, I had a horrible, I think, 1.5 GPA because I was young and stupid and didn't take my classes or high school seriously. But at the same time, I had something like an 80 or an 85 ASVAB score. Fantastic. I could have done anything in the military I wanted, but I decided I was going to go into the Army. And the reason I chose that is because I wanted to get out of my hometown quick. The Marines, it was going to be like a year. The Air Force, it was going to be a year, year and a half. Uh, all these different things where the Army, it was like three to six months once I graduated high school and I was out the door. So before I graduated high school, I went and visited my grandfather and I told him I'm looking at graduating high school, joining the Army. And he was somewhat pleased by that because... There hadn't been a male that served in the military. There was, this was a very deep-rooted family tradition where at least one man from every generation of the family has served in the U.S. Armed Forces, with the exception of my mother's generation because it was mostly females in that generation born. So, he was pleased to see this family tradition was getting started back up, and he nodded his head and smiled a bit in that way that only a grandfather could because they typically, in my experience in my family, don't express emotion super well or super thoroughly. They're kind of reserved. So, with that, a um, couple months go past. I'm about a month away from graduating. It's April and it's coming up on my birthday. And a few days before my birthday, I get a package in the mail a uh, flat rate white post office box that says my name in his my grandfather's handwritten scroll and inside is a t-shirt that he usually sends me with red chili that's used to dye the fabric um a couple of little random fact books he used to send me i think and this knife with a note in the sheet that said let me see if i can recall it I hope this serves you well in the army and that you're able to carry it. Something like that, to something to that effect. I can't remember it exactly, but for my 18th birthday, he sent me this knife with the intent of me carrying it in the armed forces. And I actually did for a good year, year and a half, alongside my Buck 110 from one of these earlier episodes of Storytime. So... I carry this in the U.S. Army once I graduate high school, and I carried it every day. Um, it was usually in my backpack, but when I got off work, I'd throw it on my belt in my civilian clothes. I got off work one night really late, threw it on my windowsill, and went to bed. I think it was a Thursday or Friday night. Woke up the next morning, went to the bathroom, came back, went to put on my clothes after showering and everything to go to breakfast, and I went to put this on my belt, and it was missing. Couldn't find it, and I noticed my window was open when it had been the night before. I also noticed that the screen they put on the barracks room windows to keep, like, pigeons and other vermin from flying into the room was missing on the ground outside. And someone had, the night before, seen my knife on the windowsill or something because of the light that was outside in that little nook where people went to smoke. And had taken the screen protector off and stolen the knife out of the window. So, I found it in a pawn shop about three, four months later. 
and bought it back. This one is not that knife. This, that same knife. I can't remember what happened to it. I think it got misplaced when I got out of the army because I had... There were quite a few knives that I owned that had just gotten misplaced when I left the army and started packing. So... Sorry, my dog. Um, so yeah, this knife means quite a lot to me because it was the first fixed blade I ever owned. It was the first knife I carried in the army. And it was a gift from my grandfather. It's discontinued now, and it costs about $120 on Amazon. You can still find them. They pop up for sale every once in a while from secondhand dealers, new in the box. So, it's a fairly decent knife. It feels good in the hand. It looks nice. The Tonto blade is especially good for almost any day-to-day -day task you might have, including prying, slicing. It just works very well for the knife that it is. Um, it's the 420 high carbon steel that Buck's really well known for and there's not as it becomes kind of a trademark in this series for me to say there's not really a whole not, lot much more to tell about this knife just because these aren't really factual reviews these are not me saying this is an absolute perfect knife or this is something you need to avoid like the freaking plague because of these this 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 fact to the story no, this is just my personal experiences and discussion about this knife and what I think about it. And would I recommend this knife to anyone despite my personal affections for it? Probably not. It's discontinued. It's $120. And you can get a Buck Compatriot, which is pretty much the same design, just in a drop point blade, for I think 60 or 80 bucks. This blade is not worth the price you pay for it, especially with it being nothing super fancy about just the 420HC. Um, yeah, it's just that's kind of the only reason I enjoy this knife or why it's in one of my unsellables is because to me, this is a very personal knife to me. My grandfather gave me this knowing I was going into the army, and he thought I would need something like this. And it came in quite handy for prying open crates, that sort of thing. As I said, I wouldn't really recommend it to anyone else just because of the price. But I do absolutely love it. I think it's a fantastic knife. I feel I feel it, uh, it fits well in my hand, as you can see, which is very unique because most fixed blade knives have a habit of hanging quite a ways off of my hand when it comes to the pommel section. So, what else is there really to say? I don't recommend you buy this just because of the price online and being discontinued. If you want it, if you like the design or the look of it, go ahead. I'm not going to stop you. I can't physically stop you from purchasing this blade, but... This really is just something where this is a more personal knife to me, and the story behind it means more than the knife itself. It's a memory to me and something that I'm not going to forget because I loved my grandfather quite a bit, and with his health struggles in recent years, I'm appreciating him more and more, especially the things he sent me because it shows that connection between he and I, where I didn't meet my grandfather until I was... 13 years old, something like that, because my family wasn't the most well-off. We didn't do a whole lot of vacationing, we didn't do a whole lot of traveling, because it was pretty much hand-to-mouth. And when my parents could finally afford a trip up to see him, it was a very unique experience, because even though I had never met this man before, we had both developed similar interests and tastes, in, despite the fact of the large distance several hundred miles between us and the almost 50 to 60 year age gap he enjoyed hunting fishing his favorite weapons were revolvers lever actions and semi-autos semi-auto pistols and that's was similar to my taste at that time i very much loved those firearms and it was a very unique situation where it's almost like he was genetically similar to me in that sense like our tastes were genetic 
So, to this day, I still very much love the man. He's one of my favorite relatives, and I hold him very near and dear to my heart because there it's kind of like what happened between me and Austin McGlone, where it's just there's that kind of odd ethereal connection through the universe, through no matter the distance, the age gap. The fact that we had so much in common, despite never having met before I, the age of 13 for me, and I think 70 or 73 for him. That's just something that's very neat, and you don't come across it very often, that kind of coincidence in your lifetime. So, I appreciate you listening to my rambling, my stories. I hope you have enjoyed this series as much as I've enjoyed talking and producing it. Um, hopefully if this series does well in the future, I'll produce a second series involving knives that I enjoy but wouldn't get rid of similarly. We will see. Um, until then, go ahead and let me know down below what do you think of this knife. Do you think it's a pretty neat design? Do you think it's worth the 120 bucks? Do you think bucks should bring it back? Because I've advocated long, long into the time I've owned this, I think they should bring this back because it really is just a Tonto version of the compatriot that they already make. Even the finish is very similar. Um, but yeah, just go ahead and comment down below if you enjoyed the video and you have something to say. Like and subscribe if you want to enjoy more of my content. Um, until next time, thank you for watching. This is Iron Wings 3187 signing off. <laughs>